Hey, hey, what's up? And thank you for joining us tonight. I'm going through the clone stamp in Photoshop. And I'm going to go through how I use it, a few tips if you like, I don't like the word tip, but I'm basically going to show you how I use it with the selection tool, which is another thing in Photoshop. And hopefully, if you don't know about it or you're struggling, you'll get something from my video uh, to help you along. So if you've searched this and you're wondering why the clone stamps come up and you've not even heard of that, but you want to do something in Photoshop, the simplest way to explain this is, I'm going to take an image, let's say there's a power cable through that sky, or there's a bit of lens dust that's suddenly a big black spot on the sky, I'm going to basically make that disappear. And how I do that is by selecting it and then effectively painting over it with another part of the image that you sort of tell you want to paint over it. I'm going to go through all that with you. It'll only be five, six, seven minutes. Two things before we start. If you could hit that subscribe button, that would be fantastic. Like with friends, share with friends, like, share, share with friends, one of them anyway. The usual stuff on YouTube, that would be brilliant. I'm going to play a quick 15 second clip of what I normally do on this channel, my vlogs and how I get out and the type of photography and art I do. So if you watch that, would be brilliant and head over and check the vlogs out. All that would be fantastic. But without further ado, let's crack on and then let's get into this clone stamp episode. <laughs> First up, let's have a look. I've brought up an image, just a random image from my recent trip to Catalonia of a chap and we're going to make his arm the spear just so it's clear and I can show you exactly what to do. So first of all, this is your clone stamp. This is on the side of Photoshop. Uh, if you can't see this toolbar, you see them little two arrows right at the top on the left hand side. You click that and it'll pop out. I'm also going to use quick selection tool. Really, really important. This is one of my major things that I do that hopefully improve the accuracy a bit. So yeah, it's really quite self-explanatory, but once you've selected what it is you want to select, i.e. the selection tool, there's a little plus and a cross, as there is with the clone stamp, and that plus or cross means you are either selecting it or deselecting it. And the size, which that little circle is at the moment, is, believe it or not, the size of the area you want to select. So I'm going to just like just show you what we mean by this. So this is a clone stamp. I've selected it. I've pressed Alt. I've clicked. So that part of that picture from now on now, when I move that cursor somewhere else, will copy and paint a little bit from the left. So you can see suddenly I've just moved that image over. That's it. That is the clone stamp. So I use this hopefully quite simply. I've mentioned before a lot of it is to do with skies. Uh, recently I've been struggling with uh, lenses for a while. I've not been able to get my camera in cleaned because I've been using it so much and blah, blah, blah. So I've been, yeah, been co covering it up, if you like, with a bit of a bit of clone stamping. So anyway, let's crack on. So I'm just going to show you why I use the selection tool first because I think the selection tool is presumably uses really good AI technology, I'm presuming, or well, AI is probably the wrong word, but just good t technology. So he knows to select the colour pixels and not the ones next to it. Whereas if you do the clone slant, I think this is the possibility. You end up just going over too much or just too little. Long story short, it takes you ages. Whereas if you select this first and then do the stamp, you can't go over the selection because it doesn't. So it just makes it a little bit easier. So I'll show you now. You hit the cross, like I said, I've already selected quite a low number. I usually start with under 40. And you see straight away, it knows that them yellowy sort of uh, white pixels are obviously different than the blue ones in the background. So it selects it like that and it's very, very accurate. Now, what you do need to remember is if you did a larger uh, sort of brush like this, boom, it's going to select a load. So it's always worth to keep it, I think, quite low. Normally the 30s and 40s for an image like this, but yeah, it all varies. Effectively, what we're going to try and do is get as close to perfect as possible. Now, just a tip, if you see there, it has selected it really, really well. However, there'll be a bit of a halo around it if you keep it like that. So I would always, for this type of thing, just select a... a few pixels around the bit that you want to select to select because then you sort of overlap each other and it should be all good then really so the trick with this one is going to be the glasses but effectively what you do is I just select what I want to select like this and then I go to the minus button and then I basically move around the bits that I need to not include hopefully that's pretty straightforward but like I say it's really important is just to remember that halo for stuff like this um, if you can get away with it always select that a little bit more than you need to another little trick as well is with this type of thing, particularly with skies and seas and things like that, you will think that the blue is the same, but it's not. 
and or maybe you won't think it, that's really arrogant, you probably don't know this anyway. But effectively what I mean by that is you end up having to select the area you want to paint over this arm, for instance, I end up selecting quite close to it, which you might think is daft because I then have to keep repeating the steps rather than say selecting right at the top and just doing one big massive paint job. But the colours are different, so it's just worth noting really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to faff around with this now, get the glasses cut out. That is just really just trial and error for you guys. If you've never done it before, uh, select the minus, select quite a low number, have a little play around and, and you'll get a hang of it. So yeah, let's uh, let's skip on. Yeah, here we go. So what you do is you go to the clon uh, clone stamp and you select it and then you press Alt and select, like I was saying before, quite close to where you want it to be. And then you start painting. So if you notice now when I'm painting and that little circle is past that line but it doesn't go past it, that's exactly what the selection tool is doing. But the little arrow, the white arrow on the right, that's where it is in the actual image. So obviously if you go too far, it's just going to start painting the guys' uh, the arms, the, uh, the guy's arms again. So we're just going to be a little bit careful, you're going to keep repeating the steps over and over. But hopefully you'll get a good uh, colour from the seat instead of like I said before, something that's really, really lighter. So you can see the bit of the glasses that I've selected as well as you go through it now. Boom. So there we're done. And I'm going to zoom out and let's have a look, see what we think. So the way I look at this is I just basically go to the minus and just unselect it all. And then we'll see what it looks like, see whether it does look real or whether you can see the difference in the picture. This was just, there was nothing in this picture, just really simply, it was a street shot, I've just taken it and I was just trying to think of something completely obvious rather than something usually boring like a like a dust spot, I thought I'll just do this just to show you the basics of, uh, of how you can do it. So yeah, I'm collecting this uh, minus and then I'm going to go down and just paint back over it um, so it gets rid of it and then let's see what it looks like. And that's it really, probably not the most perfect one, I usually go back and tidy it with a little bit of shadow, um, but I'm assuming you're going to get the gist now of what you can do. That is really, really useful, it's useful for just tons of things, loads of woodland scenes or grass scenes or if you're doing a mountainscape and you're like, I don't know, again like pit, uh, uh, power cables, you can effectively just put a forest there. And it is a bit cheating granted, but look, we are artists, we want to want to show off whatever it is that we want to show off, so there you go. Cool, so last thing is, I just wanted to maybe show you this extra little uh, thing, which is how to make your image a little bit sharper, particularly if you're printing off, it really helps, makes it that little bit stand out more. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a, a layer. If we've not done this before, don't worry too much, but effectively Control J gives you a new layer, it copies it, we go up to here like I've just shown you, and go down to Other and High Pass, and it's basically a way to manipulate the pixels. I'm not going to go into all technical jargon, I do lots more videos on layers, and I'll be doing lots more, so check them out if, if this intrigues you and you don't know about it. Um, but basically, you go to the bit of your image that's most important to you, and you can see the sort of bit of blur there. It goes grey, which is right, and you effectively just use this slider, but you don't want it really, like you just saw there with three, really standing out. What you want to try and get is where it's really gentle, and you can just about see the outline of his eyes, maybe, or his nose, or his helmet. That's what you want, and then you go down here and click overlay, and it just gives you a really subtle extra bit of sharpness. Can you see that there? Really, really subtle, because you don't want it too much. If you go too much the way you'll notice you print out, it basically goes pixelated. So it's only a way you can use it for that extra tiny little 1% I'm talking about. But for images that we're trying to create a bit differently, 1% makes a difference. So I just thought I'd show you at the end, see whether you liked it, but there you go, all fun and games. Thank you so much for watching, really genuinely appreciate it, I really hope you got a lot from that video. If you didn't, let me know, if you did, let me know even more. And for that, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like. My god, this gets repetitive, but you know what I mean. Thanks again, genuinely appreciate it. Next week out will be a vlog, check that out, and I will see you all soon.